Good morning, everybody. Orange Jay here with another War of the Visions video. And today we're going to take a look at the first wave of Final Fantasy IX units, vision cards, and gear. They're going to be rolling out to us this Friday or tomorrow at the release of this video. We're going to take a look at the kits for both units, the vision card, and we're going to take a little bit of a look at the end of the collaboration. Because just like with Final Fantasy VIII, we're going to be receiving a Trials of Reckoning that releases an accessory that will really level up up these units in an important way, like the Final Fantasy VIII accessory did for units like Squall. So let's start there and let's look at what the uh, Tetra Master, I believe that's what the card game in FF9 was called. These cards right here, the Quadmist card, what is this going to do for the FF9 unit specifically so we can think about that when we look at their kits? First of all, this thing, like we'll break down the stats on it later. It's got a defense or spirit version. All of that's fine. It brings a little bit of accuracy. But look at the effects on this piece of gear. It's insane. It's an accessory that gives single target target resist 10 and critical evade 20 to whoever is wearing it. This is amazing. An accessory with 10 single target resist means like if you're a tank or somebody like that, you can sack this with like a brigandine armor and now you're at, you know, single target and AOE resist, much like you could do if you played during the near collaborations back in the day with the pod. But we only have one pod and you had to have played back then to have it. This is for all of us to farm. So go get you yourself at least one of these. Then it will also give everyone human killer 20 with magic attacks and a boosted chance to inflict poison and berserk. It's insane. This gear, just with these you know, universal effects, is busted. Oh, it also gives 20% HP and 10 spirit. So farm this thing, it's great. But for the Final Fantasy IX units, uh, it also gives defense penetration 30 and human killer 20 with physical attacks. So obviously the conditional effects for the FF9 units are really focused on Zidane. Zidane? Zidane? Uh, at this point, I'm so confused on his name because everyone makes me question it. Zidane. I'm going to go with Zidane all in this video today. Yo, the, the MC of Final Fantasy IX, our thief friend Zidane. Defense pin, human killer. Those really only help him. But this piece of gear is insane. And we needed to look at it before we look at their kits because of this poison and berserk increase, as well as the defense pin right here, because it, it, it'll play into how we evaluate their kits, considering this is kind of the final piece for them. Okay, let's look at Gidane. You know what? Let's just go with G Gidane. Jadane right here, the old man. I'm so happy I still get to do these JP translations from Wode of Calc because they are really good sometimes. Anyway, 100 cost unit. He's not the free unit. That's dagger. So you're going to have to pull for this guy if you want him. He's wind, thief with a sense of justice, dragon knight, and spy are his jobs. His master ability, single target resist 10, will stack really well with that, you know, uh, new new accessory he's going to be bringing. Reaction block rate 20. Dream abil ability, more reaction block rate, acquired AP up and an upgraded skill pursue and release his tmr is okay it's a physical damage reduction tmr 35 percent physical damage reduction three times is a buff worth casting on yourself like make no mistake that's pretty good and then three turns of 30 accuracy i like this buff a lot especially if you can find physical only fights but the stat line on it leaves a little bit to be desired and you'll end up running accessory accessory so maybe some armor or something would be better in that accessory spot uh, if we look at his skills, let's break it down a little bit right here. We're going to need slash attack resist penetration, and we do get that straight away. Thief's combat techniques gives us 24% attack and 40 slash attack penetration. More defense pin, always going to be a good thing as well. Here's 24% more attack and 40 more defense pin. Keep in mind, with the quad missed cards, you're going to get another 30 right there, putting him at 70 just with his accessory and a support ability. That's really good. And I think for PvP sake, you're probably just going to be running these top two support abilities most of the time. If you need some more agility for tuning, you have access to that there. If you need some more movement, you have access to that right there. Maybe in PvE, if you need like crit and AP consumption down, you also have that as well. 
For counter moves, he brings Knife Guard, which is a 70% proc chance to reduce slash and strike damage by 30%. That's probably the one you're going to be running because of that 70% chance to proc. Those boosted proc rates really help considering all of the reaction block that's in the game now. You have a chance of actually proccing skills like Knife Guard, even if people are running Trust Stones and stuff like that correctly. Okay. His main kit right here, he scales off of attack, dexterity, and agility. His cheap move is pretty cool. It has a chance to steal. So this is good for like farming turtles, something like that, stealing more gill snappers. It will also increase his agility by 25% for three turns when he does it. So it's a nice little cheap move that he has. Won't be used all the time in PVP because the 121% modifier will keep it you know, pretty low on his priority list and the range is kind of short, but for 14 AP for farming runs or something yeah i could see it being used right there critical air this is his first buff we're gonna look at this is a critical damage buff for allies and most importantly a 25 single target resist buff for allies this guy is all about single target resistance that's insane 25 percent single target resist for himself and his allies right there boom that's really nice putting him with just this buff his support ability and his new accessory he is at what 45 single target resist before you even start bringing in any vision cards or any more buffs or something like that. Really big number right there. He'll also give himself 20 wind attack and 40 more slash attack resist penetration for three turns. And essentially this buff, if you're running his top two support abilities up there and his new accessory, you are now at all the penetration you need for defense and slash attack excellent now you could still top it off you're about like 80 in those areas so a few a little bit more would help but you're taken care of at least which is one buff which is really really nice then he has a sword attack which upgrades to pursue the extravagance let's look at the fully upgraded version of this which you can see has a little bit bigger aoe than the initial version of it and will now disable CT up for the targets. Basically, this is a barrier breaking move, which is really good. Turns on his follow-up attack for three turns, which we can go look at that real quick. Let's scroll down here. His follow-up attack is a 40% damage scaling attack. Scales with attack dex and agility again. Has a really nice range on it. It's a self follow-up attack, so he doesn't follow up allies attacks. It's follow up his own attacks but still follow-up attacks are really really good 165 percent modifier is decent it decreases healing power on the target and then like we said disable ct up for three turns powerful move one of his bread and butter pvp moves right here for sure and the final upgrade gives it that disabling ct up and gives it a fourth use so he can spam it a little bit in like two rounds of guild wars or something like that then he has another move flinch this is a 200 percent modifier move but only single target it is a two hit move so for single target you, you know th this could be one of his bigger damaging moves if you can only hit one person it knocks critical evasion down by 25 and decreases critical damage resistance on the target by 20 for three turns so really like anti it's an anti anti crit single target big hitting chaining move then thief survival techniques which upgrades to survival techniques of a thief this is his courage buff so it gives him courage reduces his magic damage taken by 25 percent for three turns this will balance out really well with his trust master if you run his tmr on himself it will require a lot of buffing to get this set up but essentially you could cast your tmr buff giving you that physical shield or i'm sorry that uh yeah that physical shield for three times then within the first couple turns get this buff online giving you the magic shield it's a lot of buffing though because you're also going to probably want to cast this single target resist at group buff right here so you're gonna he, he's somebody who could require a lot of turns of setup i guess is what i'm saying this is still a really good buff if you want to run it though courage is great reducing your magic damage taken is great and then ignore if someone is trying to dispel your courage this is a big thing right here it's something he brings that i haven't really seen before he can turn off an enemy's ability to dispel courage pretty cool i like that a lot the upgrade gives him 15 ap when he casts it as well making it a 30 ap generating move uh if you don't have any sort of like ap restore buff on or anything like that okay then he has bother this is a single target resist down by 20 attack 165 percent modifier short kind of short range and then like overall if you're looking at this guy from a pve chaining standpoint a single target resistance debuff is really important a two hit chaining move is nice but he lacks like a big three hit chaining move 
in his kit. You can get him one, however. Okay, let's look at this. There's a move on his sub job here that, I, that doesn't make much sense to me. A Thief with a Sense of Justice. He has a confusing attack. So, okay, that's fine. But then he has this one right here, Life Dijon. Restores HP 50% for allies, not self. Restore AP 30 for allies, not self. Increase chance to apply instant death by 200% for self. I don't really understand what this does. Increase chance to apply instant death. Maybe in the comment section, somebody can explain that one to me. What? Is he just insta giving people? I doubt that's what it is. Somebody just tell me what that's all about. Then, if you want to run Dragon Bane Knight, this will give you access to piercing moves. Again, short range is something that he's going to have to deal with right there. Uh, it'll also give him the ability to equip the triple hit holiday vision card if you want to run him and win chaining teams he can use a single target resist debuff and then follow that up with chaining moves from that vision card if you want to give him a three hit move so that's something to mention there he has spy spy is usually a great sub job because it brings that barrier buff he does not have that barrier buff so you're going to have to rely on his other barriers to get those online if you want to do that where he talked about his follow-up attack and then his limit break his limit break will increase his his physical damage by 20 percent for three turns it does 200 damage modifier and then decreases ap consumption by 30 it's a single target attack costs 43 ap it's pretty good overall zidane feels a, a lot like squall to me in terms of power where i feel like he's going to be he's a damage dealer meant to get up there and start like bruising with people should be pretty hard to kill has the ability to like turn off some things the enemy's going to do his anti courage removal thing is new and fun and that's the don if you if you like this guy if you want to play him get him play him he'll be good enough to play absolutely next let's talk about dagger so daggers are free unit 90 cost earth elemental princess of alexandria sword sorcerer kodadama wielder her accessory comes with a with a little small aoe group buff that nullifies po poison petrify and toad for allies as well as giving them a little bit of ap i see some potential like pve cases here where maybe you're fighting an annoying mob that casts those uh, effects on you so you might want to equip your silver pendant just to throw that buff out there and nullify those status effects her master ability is 5% magic, which what the heck, give her more than that. Reduce magic damage taken 10% for self, so she always just reduces magic damage 10%. Great. That's awesome. Her dream ability is critical evade 20, magic attack resist penetration 20. Excellent. And the upgrades the skill determination of a princess. When we're looking at her kit, let's really remember these cards right here, right? Here's human killer with magic attacks, poison resistance, Berserk. So 200% chance to inflict poison resistance, 50% for self. Oh, this is different than what I thought it was, isn't it? This is different than what I thought it was. I thought this was a boosted chance to inflict the status effects. This is a boosted chance to inflict poison resist. So she is more resistant to poison and more resistant. The people wearing this are more resistant to poison and berserk than they are to they they, they are uh, applying it. Okay, this is no longer the dumbest item in the game but still this is nice you'll be more resistant to those things she gets the uh single target resist the magic attack for self up with you uh magic attacks human killer well words 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 you see what i'm saying increase human killer 20 with magic attack so let's remember those things for her while we look at her kit okay skills what are we looking at so her new ones she has champ boost which is activation time down 250 so that usually this first new support ability like is the really good one that's not the case for her act like a princess which upgrades to preparedness as a princess is her good one so it's going to give you 12 spirit 40 spirit pin 15 aoe resist and 40 elemental chain resist really good now if you run it alongside chant boost that'll just give you activation time down instead you're probably going to be looking at like spirit or i'm sorry magic and ap consumption maybe uh there's 30 percent magic right there i don't love that hp lightning resist spirit lightning resist her kit's kind of all over the place in this regard after the preparedness of a princess support ability because what are you doing with her other one? This is a girl who's meant to like be a damage dealer who can spot heal for you, especially her limit break is a big time heal. So you want as much magic as possible on them, which makes you think you might go with light sword technique right here or magic power up level one, which gives you that 30% magic boost. One of those two is probably the one I'm running. Now, her new auto potion. This it, auto potion's a great name. I wish they'd bring Final Fantasy Tactics back again and give us the chemist job. <gasps> 
but I digress. Okay, 20% chance to proc, heal yourself for 120x. 20% chance is not very great. She does have a 100% proc one, but it's only against missile damage and it reduces damage by 30%. Nothing great going on here with her counter moves. Um, okay, that's probably the freest part of her, you know, free kit right there. Her new main job. Let's take a look at that. So summon Sheraton. You'll notice her moves are all about like summoning things. Although she is not technically summoning, these are just casting black mage spells basically but the spells will look really cool and the spell animation is a summon doing something to somebody so they do keep it thematic with who she was in ff9 sheraton that's 141 percent modifier she scales off of magic dex agility and luck and this one has a 25 percent chance to inflict paralyze on targets so she's all about doing status effects to the enemy really really annoying to deal with uh Medane's defense right here this will drop this is a self buff that will drop her aggro by six give her protect and shell pretty solid right if you want her getting in there and casting your summons on people having protect and shell up and dropping her aggro is a nice way to go about that so i don't hate that buff at all dark golem summon this is a big one it dispels courage for the target and does 185 percent modifier damage so she has courage removal and she can use that thing four times then princess's determination this is a group buff for her this grants to allies dispel protect and shell it also gives her 40 percent magic and 20 spirit for three turns Turns. So a nice little self steroid right here with protect and shell dispel for allies. Good. That's a really solid move. Okay. Dark Bahamut summon. This one's very important to her for several reasons. One, 220% modifier, big DPS. It's a big damaging spell. It's a magic attack, but it's also colorless. So it's not tied to earth. If she finds herself fighting like a, a poor element like wind, she can go with this move right here or Dark Odin that we'll see later to avoid that, you know, automatic elemental bad matchup right there. Then she will follow that up with this follow-up skill, which we'll look at here in a minute. And with the upgrade, she will decrease spirit penetration on the target for three turns. It's it's a diamond shaped AOE, which is always nice. It's a two hit move. And the follow up that it casts is this one right here. It is a targeted AOE heal for allies, 120X. So a nice little heal that the Dark Bahamut summon brings. This is going to be her bread and butter move. Absolutely. Like, yes, she could turn courage off, and that's cool, but this is her bread and butter. Then protective charm. This is AOE resist for 25 for an ally. So she can look at an ally and be like, boom, have 25 AOE resist. That's pretty cool. It also gives them shell and gives her re-raise. So, okay, that's pretty solid. I like that skill a lot. Princess of Alexandria sub job. She has a single target, 210x heal, and Dark Odin summon, which has a chance to inflict poison, 185% modifier, smaller AOE. So she's going to default to using Dark Bahamut summon in most cases because it's the bigger modifier, but she still can inflict poison and she can inflict paralyze, which can be fairly annoying to deal with. Sword Sorcerer gives her access to multi hit slashing moves, including slash attack resist penetration and another damage type in case the enemy is just stacking magic resist not something we see a lot these days but it can still be useful and then kodadama wielder gives her access to 100 percent hit chance move gives her access to attack that stuns a uh, move and jump buff which could be good and a magic damage shield with aoe resist for self uh, her limit break this is her big time spot heal you can see diamond shaped aoe costs 69 ap which is a, a lot but being a black mage she'll start with a bunch it dispels all debuffs for allies 310x modifier and increases all attack resistances by 10 percent so after she tops up her allies they will be a little bit harder to kill for the rest of the fight and that's dagger and i'm happy i caught that little bit about the uh, quad mist card so i will like edit that at the beginning of the video okay vision card that we're getting under the blue and red light this is a pretty stacked vision card the jobs on it well we'll look at the jobs and we'll look at the units that can use it here in a minute first of all hp attack and agility on the stat line i love cards with agility on the stat line really useful for boosting the agility of some like older or slower units slap a vc on there give them some agility the unit effect defense penetration 10 accuracy 15 is awkward if you're trying to run this in a mage comp but good i guess if you're trying to run it in like a spear or dagger comp so a little bit of a uh, something to play with right there in terms i'm sorry i've been saying black mage she's a she's a staff user uh not a staff she's a <laughs> oh man i've made some errors in this video you can tell i'm a little tired today she is a um she's not a staff user she's a uh 
you know, Masheri's thing. The, you know, the bonk them with their little uh, bonker stick. Goodness gracious, what is that mace? She's a mace user. Oh my goodness. So yeah, mace user right there. Anyway, let's keep going. Here's your buff. Group buff, elemental chain resist 36, critical hit rate 20, single target resist 20. So this is really big. Anytime you see single target resist 20 with other things that are good, it's a good VC. But who can use it? Well, let's go look at that. Obviously, she's going to be able to use it and Zidane's going to be able to use it. Outside of them, well, let's see. Maybe you're trying to run a little mono Earth team. Let's see what Earth is bringing you right here. Well, you have Dialdo. That's a big W. No Bradley on there, but you have Queen Mashery and Oberon to bring you back up. Swimsuit Lilith has performed pretty well lately. Eileen's the goddess and Lorenzo is Lorenzo. So there's your Earth team if you're trying to do that. If you're trying to run this on a Wind team, well, uh, Veritas of the Wind, we don't know about him in Global yet, but I'm guessing he'll be pretty decent. Other than that, Sodaly, Flag Bear, Glassy, that's pretty much the top of wind. Rysol's pretty good. Sharice is new, at least. Christmas Ulartha, I mean, maybe she'll get an upgrade. And then Halloween Little Leela's on here as well. So there's your wind teams. And then here's just everybody, right? If you're going Spear team, you do have Jaden the Celebrated on there. Roth is good. If you're going Mace team, Roth Dagger could be a nice little combo. If you could find somebody else to mix in with them, maybe a Queen Mashery, something like that. And then here, I'm just kind of quickly scrolling. Here's what the rest of this squad looks like. If you see something on there that you think is cool, I just, I, I like to look at the mono element slash um, job specific that you can mix in and see what it works. But if you're trying to run a mace team or a knife team or a spear team, I think this card could be worth looking at picking up depending on what you have or don't have. We'll also get two new weapons to farm. The cat's hand racket right here. This has a magic variation. That's 181 magic. You do drop to five accuracy here, which is interesting. The buff is magic 30% for uh, dagger, magic attack 15 and evocation gauge boost 30. I like this because even though her skills are not summons, you do get that evocation gauge boost so she can actually summon as well with a real summon and you get 20 magic attack resistance penetration which she will love farm this for her use it on her if you're using her the mage masher okay your attack variation here 181 attack again accuracy on that attack version is low but i don't think you're getting this I don't think you're going to drop your DPS stat to 126 just to pick up 15 accuracy. For Zidane, you get 15 critical hit rate, 30 reaction block rate, and 8 AoE resistance. There we go. This dude, if he's equipping his knife and this card, can stack AoE and single target resist with his dagger and his accessory. That's pretty cool, and it gives you 15 slash attack. So there we go. Remember, like I I'm going to definitely go back and edit what I said about this, but just keep this piece of gear in mind as you're thinking about these units, because it will be a nice little buff to them when it finally does come around, especially Zidane, like Squall's accessory that he got, the Ragnarok toy accessory, right? Whatever Ragnarok toys, what I call it. It was a huge boost to his like uh, barrier that he provides and all of that. So thank you guys for watching. Sorry, I stumbled around on this one a little bit. Definitely fatigued, but this is a 22 minute video that I am not going to refilm because I made a few mistakes. I'll do some edits, maybe put some words in there, calling myself a fool a couple times, but that's all I got for today. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great evening and I'll catch you next time. Peace.